Welcome to the new office. This video is technically months in the making. Where's the costume? And What's with the sweater? I, I don't know. I thought it was like a comfy, kind of funny sweater. It's got murder. <laughs> Cute duck. This isn't what we signed up for. Costume. All right. Costume. All right. Costume. All right. Costume. costume. Are, we, are we stopping? Through the power of Susan. It's me. I'm in here. So before we get started, I gotta give a medium level spoiler alert here. I'm definitely not gonna spoil the ending of Outer Wilds or any of the late game discoveries, but there is quite a bit I need to reveal in order to talk about the game as a whole. So I gotta say, if you're already planning on playing the Outer Wilds, I recommend you don't watch this video until you've played it for yourself. And one more thing before we get started, guys, your boy's one step closer to becoming a full-time YouTuber. I got a sponsor today. I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. That feels so weird to say. <laughs> you know, space is an amazing place, but without the proper spacesuit, it can be kind of super dangerous. Kind of like being connected to the internet without using a VPN. So I recommend the best in the business, NordVPN. NordVPN is a VPN service that protects your data and information while browsing the internet. With services like hiding your IP address and encrypting your traffic, shielding your data from snoopers and cyber attacks, and allowing you to safely use public Wi-Fi hotspots. You guys remember in my Battlefield video I mentioned that a hacker stole my account years ago? And I've actually been hacked into and gotten my credit card information stolen. It was because my information was just floating around there on the internet. And if I was using a VPN, that wouldn't have happened. NordVPN also has a really cool feature that can change your virtual location to any of Nord's 5,200 servers around the world in 60 different countries, allowing you access to content that's unavailable in your country. And you can change locations with NordVPN so quick, you might think you went through a black hole. But you didn't. You're safe. And so is your internet. NordVPN also takes your digital safety to the next level with their new threat protection feature that guards your devices from malicious websites, malware, and trackers, even if you're not connected to Nord servers at the time. You can also connect up to six devices, and it works with all major platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Plus, NordVPN has a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So click the link below, go to nordvpn.com slash sather, that's sather, not sather. With my link, you can get yourself a two-year plan with a huge discount and one additional month for free. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. This game, Outer Wilds, made by Mobius Studios, is considered to many a masterpiece video game. It's won numerous awards and gets 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10 reviews left and right. So you might be thinking, why haven't I heard of this game? Well, there's probably a few reasons. First of all, it's an indie developed single player game made by a team of six people. And then when the game was released, it was launched exclusively on the Epic Games platform, just as it was starting to become a Steam competitor. And the last and probably main reason you might not have heard of this game is because some of you probably are still thinking I'm talking about The Outer Worlds, which was a different space exploration game made by a much bigger studio with a much bigger budget and launched their game the same year, just months apart. I felt kind of bad watching the Noclip documentary on Outer Wilds, because you can clearly tell the devs are pretty bummed when they found out about Obsidian's game coming. I remember looking at that being like, wow, I really hope they like, hear about our game and don't do that. <laughs> but fortunately, over time, Outer Wilds has grown a large, dedicated fan base that truly loves their games because they didn't just settle for making another ordinary space exploration game. They decided to make a whole new kind of gaming experience. I've played a lot of space games in my life. I mean, Mass Effect, Dead Space, Astroneer, No Man's Sky, Lego Star Wars, Spore. Okay, I might be losing ya. But Outer Wilds sets itself apart in major ways. At the risk of sounding like a pretentious douche, I barely want to call Outer Wilds a game because it's more of an experience. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So many space games today put a strong emphasis on the vastness of their universes or multiverses. And to their credit, it's crazy the extent procedural generation is gone, especially in space games. I mean, No Man's Sky literally created quintillions of planets, I didn't even know that was a number, with seemingly endless amounts of randomly generated creatures and plant life, it's incredible. But the technology isn't there yet to match the single galaxy Outer Wilds has handcrafted. 
Procedural generation can't create a game world full of this many interconnected systems and mysteries and lore waiting for you to discover around every corner. In Outer Wilds, you play as an alien known as a Herthian, commonly referred to as Hatchling. At the beginning of the game, you wake up under the stars on your home planet of Timber Hearth as the newest pilot in the Outer Wilds space program. The Outer Wilds goal is to improve Herthian understanding of their solar system while also investigating the mystery of the Nomai, a highly intelligent ancient species that came before you. The first day you wake up is your launch day, where you'll take off on your first solo adventure into the stars. Yes, tonight's his crucial night, you're right. The thing I love about the Outer Wilds introduction is the anticipation. You start on this cozy, safe world that's big enough for you to think the whole game could be played in it, but the story calls to you to look up into the skies and go discover whole new worlds through the power of space travel. You're then given the first ever Nomai text translator, and before you take off, you get locked into a connection with a Nomai statue that seems to replay your life that day back to you. Hey, I did all that stuff. Copy that. Then you hop Here in your spaceship, go. check the ship log to make sure you know where you're going, jump in the cockpit, and ignite your thrusters. Blasting yourself into the sky and breaking through your atmosphere, and in a moment's notice, you're floating away through empty space, alone. The feeling of space travel in Outer Wilds is so compelling. There's a great sense of wonder once you leave your atmosphere and you can finally see the places you can start heading towards. The way your spacecraft moves in zero gravity feels weightless, but at the same time, you can feel the intense pace pickup as you increase thrusting power in a certain direction. Thrusting power? Giggity. Oh, and you're definitely gonna crash in this game. The Ash Twin is just a sandball right now. We should go to Ash Twin. Let's do it. <laughs> Flying through space is just so immersive. Like, I felt actual anxiety knowing I was completely alone, and at any moment I could just fall out of the spaceship and be stranded floating through space. So I can just jump out of this at any time? <gasps> It's just such a cool juxtaposition from the safety of where you came from. Somebody making soup? This is a smaller detail, but I also just love how your spaceship is like a tiny home made out of the scrap from Timber Hearth. So no matter how crazy things get, you can always just jump back into your spaceship for a moment of comfort. Mobius did what I would consider straight up genius level work figuring out what functional sciences they could add into their game. Given I was a terrible student growing up, so take this with a grain of salt, and I'm not even saying that they made everything in this game ultra realistic scientifically, but I am saying once you start figuring out the systems and the science and the logic behind what is truly happening in this galaxy, it will blow your f***ing mind. I mean, the things they pull off in this game, like black holes and orbital mechanics and time dilation, quantum physics makes an appearance. I, dude, I still don't even understand logically how most of these things work in the game. And most of the time while I was playing it, my Twitch chat was just trying to explain it to me. Yes, I can see. Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight year old? You can see clearly. But at some point while playing the game, you will probably experience something very similar when you realize everything in this game was already functionally in motion since the moment you woke up. The brain power behind this game is just wild. Outer Wild. The first planet I landed on was Outer Rock, which is not a planet, it's a moon. But that's where I met my first fellow Outer Wilds explorer, Esker. An older, much lonelier, pathetic, no, okay. <laughs> Herthian, who basically told me to go to the North Pole of this planet. Oh shit, I did land on him. So I hopped over a cliff ahead of me and choked to death because I forgot to put on my spacesuit. But then something weird happened. The screen went black and a replay of my life that day began, initiating my first ever time loop. That's right, Outer Wilds is a Deathloop, Groundhog's Day, Palm Springs style video game. Every time you die, your progress towards uncovering the Know My Mystery is retained, but you start back to where your day began, waking up under the stars next to Slate cooking some mallows. All right. The first time this happened, it bent my brain. I didn't know a main factor in this seemingly cozy, campy space adventure game was gonna be me gruesomely dying hundreds of times. I can cheat code this real quick. Yeah! <laughs> no, I don't even have to jump over. Oh, my legs! Black hole. No! Oh, full throttle, baby. <laughs> yep. The first time I died was because of downright stupidity. I mean, I walked into empty space without a spacesuit. To be fair, I saw Esker without one, so I was just following Proto. The second time I died was much 
Stranger. I went back to Adel Rock and went into some ruins and started translating some Nomai text I found on walls. But I didn't really understand what I had learned. So after almost falling off shit, of Adel Rock, shit, shit. About. I aimlessly traveled to the next planet I could reach, Brittle Hollow. In Outer Wilds, you won't find a single planet that's similar to the last one you took off from, which is creatively astounding. No disrespect to No Man's Sky, and I really mean that. No Man's Sky has made a tremendous comeback. But still, the first few planets you visit, sure, the colors, the weather, and materials might change a bit, but overall, it's a fairly similar experience. In Outer Wilds, the planets are like, oh, did you have fun on Brittle Hollow where the planet is constantly exploding apart Jesus. from a volcanic moon firing at it while it also contains the center of a black hole inside itself? Well then get ready for Giant's Deep, where the world is covered in water, much like that interstellar scene, except there's also giant tornadoes going around all over the place, and it's somehow even more terrifying. You'll spend hours exploring each one of these planets, and thankfully the game is just so well paced, it avoids overloading you with clues all over the place. It really does feel special every time you discover a new clue that clears another question mark on your ship log. I will say this game gets a little Christopher Nolan-y in the fact that you really do have to pay attention and put on your thinking caps. As I flew towards Brittle Hollow, I noticed something sticking out on the side of the planet that looked like a crashed spaceship. I entered it and found more text to read left behind by the Nomai, and ended up learning that this was a Nomai escape pod. You'd think that the other Outer Wilds members in this game would be the main characters of it, and they definitely have a big role to play. But I'd argue that the most intriguing story lies in the Nomai text that you'll read where you can listen in on this past civilization communicate amongst each other. I really want to see that test too, Lamy. These names. <laughs> You'll read these stories of Nomai talking between each other, sharing their exciting discoveries and theories, their inside jokes, their tone and their humor, them sharing their fears and sadness. It really pulls you in and makes you wonder what happened to them, or where are they, or when were they? The Know My Story really started putting questions into my head, but as I left the spacecraft, I slipped off a ledge and started hurtling no, towards a black hole. Oh shit, I actually am gonna die. No! No! <laughs> oh, something. Tractor beams. Oprah Winfrey. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Luckily, I was saved by some sort of tractor beam. This is where I met my second Outer Wilds member. And don't worry, I'm not gonna cover all of them. This banjo playing Big Daddy was named Ryback. Oh, you launched, that's great. Good for you. And if you're wondering why I'm talking in a British accent here, it's probably obvious, but if you don't know, people from space are British. Good, our first catch of the day. Like you know how to fish. Me and him got to know each other pretty briefly before some strange music started to play. Looks like a Big Daddy from Bioshock. Uh, if you've played Outer Wilds, you probably know where I'm going with this. I didn't quite pay attention to it, and this happened. What is it? I found the Nomai escape pod on Brittle Hollow. Wow, so then the Nomai probably came here from somewhere outside. The solar system. They must have been in trouble when the- Jesus, am I gonna f***ing die? <laughs> when I died, I was facing Ryback, so I still didn't really understand what exactly happened. So I looped again. I really should have talked to him faster, huh? Went back to Brittle Hollow, made a bunch more discoveries, and ended up dying a third time. But this time, it was pretty fun. I gotta pee real quick. I'll be right back. What's so funny about the spacesuit? The zipper, that was like the most uncomfortable pee I've ever had because the zipper like starts here and my penis is here. All right. What the f Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I also started to see what was killing me. It seemed to me that the sun in this galaxy was dying, turning itself into a red giant before eventually going supernova. This discovery was another wrench in the plot of what I thought this game was going to be. I started thinking of my own theories of why the sun would be dying. How do I stop it from exploding? How do the Nomai tie into this story? How do I tie into this story? What I love the most about Outer Wilds is the way the game progresses almost purely off of player curiosity. And you won't just be making theories about the universe itself. You'll find things like ancient technologies and try to figure out how they function. You'll discover locations and objects oh that gosh. behave in really strange ways. You'll hear things through the signal scope like a harmonica playing in the distance. What do you think, I'm not gonna go check out on the guy in the middle of space playing Piano Man? 
Pretty soon you'll be making connections all over the place, learning something on one planet that unlocks a secret on another. And every loop you make, after dying in various stupid ways, gets you that much closer to figuring out what is actually going on. And here's something interesting, Outer Wilds doesn't really have combat. Fuck, I'm gonna miss this. Me crashing into things does not count. And as a guy who loves combat in video games, I wasn't sure if an indie exploration game like Outer Wilds was gonna be my jam. A lot of these modern games rely on giant action set pieces, cinematics, realistic graphics. Potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, ram. But Outer Wilds is this. <laughs> but Outer Wilds is this fairly quiet journey following the breadcrumbs left behind by an extinct species. Like, how is that supposed to contend? I'll tell you how. Everything in this game is well done. It's either fun, interesting, or introspective. And my penis is here. You might as well put that shit in an encrustable. Because guess what? That shit is my jam. And I say the game is a fairly quiet journey. <laughs> fairly, because the game does get intense. Like, just try landing on the sun station, man. That junk gets intense quick. And it reminded me a lot of that interstellar scene when they're docking, and Tars is like, it's not possible. And Matthew's like, no, no it's necessary. Oh, chills. Ooh, mama. Magic velocity. Come on. No. You'll probably die instead. I, I gotta get back to the wheel. <laughs> and this game can be scary as shit. I'm looking at you, dark bramble. I am so scared right now. Holy hell! Exclusive cuts of another $40 donation. This makes it way less scary. Holy shit! Holy fuck! The last thing I was expecting from this game is jump scares, but the game's scary factor is amplified in even more subtler ways. No, 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 no! You'll find yourself in these eerie locations alone, not knowing where you are or if you're gonna die in some new strange way. Over time, it starts making you fear the unknown and shows you the darker side of exploring this universe. As optimistic of an adventure that this game starts out as, during your journey through space, you'll come across some grim discoveries. Sobering scenes of blossoming civilizations brought to total ruin. Villages, architecture, families, children, completely wiped out by some mysterious force. These types of discoveries may lead you to asking yourself if anything you're doing is preventing you from an eventual cosmic demise. This game is gonna make you feel things. And a lot of that credit goes to the amazing soundtrack and ambiance. A lot of space games tend to lean heavy into the synths and electronic beats to emphasize that future tech-based exploring. And Outer Wilds definitely has its synthesizers, but it's where they chose to use their instruments that makes it so nuanced. This is subjective, but I feel like there's almost like three main voices in the OS. The Herthian sound is warm, acoustic, primitive instruments that make you feel like you're around a campfire with friends. The Nomai sounds much more advanced advanced and focused and progressive. It's almost like their sound is supposed to be played in a lab where they're inventing new technology. And the last voice would be the universe, with these big, ghostly, echoic noises that are daunting and mysterious. The game combines and subtracts these elements throughout the soundtrack, but the game can also remove the soundtrack for huge parts of the game. And it was a great choice backed up by the composer. I love the use of silence in this game. <laughs> Being outside in the vast desolation of space, only hearing the sound of your breath can make you feel so alone. And hearing the sound of something else with you can make it more terrifying. What do I do here besides die? This place is hell. But the music and ambiance can also be used for hope and encouragement, indicating you've crossed another milestone in the story, driving home that sense of progress, enhancing the reward from chasing your curiosity, exploring a galaxy full of mysteries and stories waiting to be uncovered. <gasps> And I want to reiterate, this game was made by six people. Like, other studios. What are you even doing? It's one of the most unique games I've ever played, full of surprises, excitement, science, and emotion. And I wish I could play it again for the first time, but I can't. But maybe you can. Out of Wilds is something that a video can only partially explain. The rest, you'll just have to experience. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Uh, I did just want to say thank you one more time for this. Uh, we passed 100,000 subscribers. I mentioned it last video, but I didn't have the award. And just getting this award is one of the most surreal experiences that's ever happened in my life because I was a huge 
YouTube nerd growing up and I've been saying for years that I wanted to be a YouTuber and the fact that it's like realized is like unbelievable. So just want to say thank you and uh, I'm officially settled in my house so hopefully I'll be able to like crank out some videos a little quicker and with more sponsors like NordVPN getting on board I might just be able to do this thing full time soon. We'll see. Thanks guys and I'll see you around.